Hello, I'm David Hunt and welcome to the show. It's all about the arts and today it's, oh, it's a Ballarat boy who came to the big smoke. Oh, we let him in, you know, we didn't stop him at the border. Uh, didn't start his career as an artist. He had a very different career, we'll, we'll get to that because it's very, very interesting. But then eventually the bug got him and he, he went off to school, took his little school bag and off he went as a mature student and got a Bachelor of Fine Arts in sculpture. Yes, it's a sculpture. You might see it over my shoulder already. Uh, lecturing for many years along the way, uh, and, and but also obviously doing his own work on the side, but then he thought, no, it's now time for me to get serious and be a full-time artist. His use of colour and materials on the surface, he totally takes control of all that. It's absolutely beautiful what he does. And I was lucky enough to go to his studio and see some of the working models of what, what, um, what he's doing. And I always find that really fascinating when it's a, a sculptor and when they're doing big pieces, but then they make these tiny little things to, to start the ball rolling. Um, then there's this piece of art, uh, this sculpture that's huge and it's on a freeway and uh, you know, it causes accidents all the time. People run off the road looking at it because it's so, so amazing. Uh, and it's just found a new home. They decided to take it off. No, it was time, time was up. And he's now got this amazing big exhibition coming and we'll talk about that as well. John, hello. Hi, David. So welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, my pleasure. Growing up in Ballarat, how was that? Difficult. <laughs> Cold. Cold. <laughs> but, you know, my family was pretty amazing uh, and you know um it was look i was only there until i was 11 and then we all moved to melbourne ah. so but you know they were formative years and in a way it was good we roamed free yeah well you would uh, in a, a town like that but also architecturally the buildings are, are quite spare although you were probably in one of the suburbs did you go into the the heart of the town very yeah, often? yeah every friday afternoon yeah we'd meet our grandmother right and we'd um, go shopping in Myers. Hey. But even Saturdays, we'd go to matinees, you yeah, know, at the, the we'd catch the yeah. tram into the yeah, right. kids' matinees. And so did you have an inkling about art? Because as I mentioned in, in the, the intro, is that you didn't really you know, like venture into art until much later. So back then there was no interest? Well, not in art because um, I can't recall doing art even in uh, primary school. And um, I certainly didn't do it in, in, in secondary school because it wasn't available. I was a, it was a new school tied on resources. But um, no, but I did, I did learn crocheting <laughs> when I was like, I don't know, seven years old. The lady next door taught me crocheting. And I used to make these sort of pretty crazy things. Um, yeah, crocheting, which is sort of odd. And I think my family thought it was a bit odd too. Uh, but um, no, that was about all I... Oh, I used to make mobiles for, um, you know, birthday presents and Christmas okay. presents. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Well, there you go. That was a little bit of a start to yeah. it all, I suppose. But that was my idea of art. Well, I didn't even think about art. I just thought of yeah. making things, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Okay. Um, so... Yeah, you know, like when when you um, left school, what, what what were you doing? Because you've led a very interesting life outside of art. Um, I well, I left school at sixteen, and um, my mum saw a job in the paper and said, "Look, why don't you do this?" And it was um, working in display, the display department. It was nineteen seventy two, um, and this was at Maya Chatson, and uh, I worked there for two and a half years, and it was sort of wild, actually. Deborah Legay was my senior. <laughs> um, so people, she was doing drag at night, and uh, she'd just come from Hong Kong, Leg Girls. Yeah. It was pretty wild. I could imagine it was it a really been. fantastic baptism into um, the gay scene in Melbourne. Started going out to clubs, you know, 16 and 17, and. Um, yeah, so I did that and then worked sort of with a, a, an independent company doing um, uh, a window dressing for another year. And then 
all that time I was sort of um, doing dance classes and I, I, with my friends, we all moved to Sydney and just did dance classes 24 seven. And I, you know, I had a, a very momentary sort of um, career in, uh, in contemporary dance. Who uh, with? Who with? Uh, well, I used, to, I used to do classes every week uh, with uh, Margaret Barr in Balmain. And uh, in that time, it was now 75, uh, 76, uh, li the Lindsay Kemp Company was spending a lot of time in Sydney. Yeah. And we used to go to Lindsay's um, classes about four afternoons a week. And then every, after the um, class, we'd uh, go and have something to eat. And then we'd sneak in upstairs to... Um, whatever performance he was doing, whether it was Flowers or um, he did a Punch and Judy pantomime, you know, at Christmas time. I mean, yeah, it was really sort of quite a wonderful um, experience. But um, yeah, it was, uh, I, and I got a couple of gigs. I was in a musical in, um, <laughs> that sort of did about a hundred um, uh, performances before it closed with, you know, some big names and I was in the dance corps, you know. Yeah, what was it? It was called Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club oh, Band aye. on the Road Show. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. With Doug Parkinson. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, he famously did Dear Prudence, didn't he? The yeah, song that, that's yeah. right. Uh, wow. And, uh, I, you know, I did Carmen at the Opera House with um, the um, Australian Opera, you know. Some pretty funny things. Yeah. But then you got involved with uh, the AIDS was uh, re rearing its head and you got involved in, in that part of the world. Well, what? then I became a sort of juvenile delinquent, which was just <laughs> running wild in Sydney in the 70s. Uh, the sort of hedonistic world just sort of, you know, swept me up and, you know, took me places that I probably wouldn't want to revisit. And, uh, and, and then I had to pick up the pieces and um, in picking up the pieces later on, like, you know, some years later, toward the end of my 20s, um, it was, um, you know, a late, well, it was a mid 80s and um, HIV was um, everywhere. Yeah. So um, I, um, I started sort of getting involved to some extent, you know, in um, HIV work. Um, and then in the early 90s, when I moved back to Melbourne, I, um, I sort of got more serious, but it, with HIV, particularly in, in relation to drug injecting, uh, because there was not a lot, the, people didn't want to touch that. The gay community was sort of, you know, um, a bit, you know, frightened of it. And yet it was a, a, a significant issue. And um, so I, I worked on, you know, uh, research projects with um, Dr. Nick Cross out at the McFarlane Burnett Centre at Fairfield, where the um, AIDS ward was. Right. For five years I worked. Wow, there. Yeah. wow. While I was studying my undergrad and honours, uh, and then I worked at the AIDS Council for two years between my honours and my masters in fine art. Right. So, I was ba balancing all of these sort of... Um, right, so you, you had an income doing something you know, like re really important uh, as, as you were studying art. So what was it that, that took you to study art? What, what was that moment? It was like a, one of those closing doors moments, I reckon, because I remember the call. I, I made a call to RMIT um, TAFE spoke to the head of art and said, you know, I'm thinking of doing art, but I'm not sure if I should do psych psychology instead. And he said, you know, why don't you do some drawings? And I took the drawings into him. Not that I drew, but, you know, I, I did a few things and took them into him and that was it. Because you actually told me the other day when I went down to your studio that um, he said, oh, show me some of your work. And you go, I haven't got any work to show you. I don't you. draw. So you had to quickly do stuff. So how encouraging was he in that respect uh, to actually take you on board and go and you know, like help you through the process of going, you should do art? Well, he was very encouraging, maybe a little bit too encouraging. He used to take me out to lunch and was a little flirtatious. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
But uh, no, I think, you know, I think it was a great experience. And I, I, I didn't, I wasn't worried about his, yes. oh, his yeah. nature, flirtatious nature. Um, I was a sort of, uh, you know, I was reasonably toughened by then, wizened. Um, and uh, no, they are great. They were really great. And, I, you know, I put a portfolio together and applied for VCA, which was where I wanted to go. Yeah. And, and um, what, you know, like sort of learning your process and, and, and why sculpture? Where, where, where did that rear its head? Look, uh, it, it reared its head earlier. I mean, it reared its head when I was, you know, seven, like I said, in, um, in terms of crocheting. I think it... And the mobiles, I suppose. The mobiles. Uh, it reared its head in... Um, when I was, uh, you know, at one point I got in, interested in um, Ikebana. Um, I won't go into that story. But um, uh, so I did sort of... I did first grade in Sagetsu Ikebana. And so I, I, it was still I was fumbling around not knowing that it was art, but I was actually making things. I actually did do a... Um, a term at the Bondi um, uh, Community Arts School in the evening in sculpture. So there was something in me that was indicating sculpture. Mm. Yeah, mm. and also the dance, uh, you know, uh, um, sort of gave me um, a capacity to develop my orientation of self and objects in space. Yep. It sort of all started making yep, sense. Making, making yeah. sense. So here you are, you finish your, your bachelor, uh, and but you, you're still working uh, within, uh, you know, like uh, helping people through that really tough time. So w when was the, the, the door opening for you to concentrate more on, on your art? Pretty much straight away. What happened? Well, um, on my grad... On my on the graduation show opening, uh, I was walking out with my parents, and John Catapan, who at that time was his painter, who's he, who at that time was head of drawing, uh, came up to me, and I hardly knew John. Um, uh, I know him well now, but uh, he said, uh, told me that. Um, Earlier that day, he'd been showing Irene Sutton, the gallerist, um, around the campus, and um, she loved my um, uh, presentation of works, and um, that I should follow it up with her. Uh, and there was a, a mutual friend of Irene's and mine who um, a few months later put us in touch and we had our first meeting. But also then, you know, uh, a lot was happening, you know, after about a year or something, uh, there was um, a review in what was then the sort of um, the, the, the most um, influential publication uh, in Australia, which was Art and Text. So there was a review of a show that I did. Um, actually, that show was, that was in third year, and that was reviewed in Art and Text. So, yeah. uh, and then, you know, another show was reviewed in Art and Text, and then an article was done like a year or two later. So it happened very quickly. I didn't really, I thought this was normal, you know, for everyone. Um, could, well, not could, exactly, but. Could you tell that y your work was special though? Yeah, because obviously it wasn't. The, the norm, and you would have realised that down the track. So, what 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 made you your work stand out that you were getting those those reviews and a gallery? Um, people told me that the work was um, good. Um, I, I I'm not sure. You're not sure. <laughs> I mean, even now, like I mentioned prior to you know we beginning today um uh, you know i'm just c finishing a work at the moment in the studio and i looked at it last night and i just sort of think oh my god how did that happen you know because uh, in the, there's a transformation that happens in the last um you know few days when when you're finishing a work and it really sort of assumes its own power and this is it's not it hasn't been surfaced yet painted uh but it, it's already got that sort of um i don't know that quality about it which um, I can't explain. Wow. 
Wow, so it's something inner that com comes out. You know, like you, your, your soul is taken over by the demon art that comes out of you. Well, Marcel Duchamp says that artists are mediumistic beings, and I do think I summon the muses. Brilliant. That, that sounds incredible. So you then lectured for, yeah, quite, for a, quite a while. About 25 years. Wow. So what was that like? Was it, did you get inspiration from that or was it hard going because, you know, like younger people sort of not, not uh, wanting to work or did you find that they were inspirational? You learn how, when, you, when you're teaching in art school, because, you know, art schools can be full of lazy sort of slobs, you know, <laughs> kids that just want to sort of come to school and just like be slackers and just go to openings and do you know what I mean, just sort of whatever. But at the same time, a lot of them are, 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 are very talented because, you know, we've got a couple of great art schools in um, this city. And um, so it's sort of a mixture of all of that. You've got to push some and others, you just know they're, they're great and they'll do what they do. But, uh, you know, most of the time that I taught, I was teaching sessionally. So I was able to wrap my practice, my making, pretty successfully around it. I had a, a, a great degree of freedom, you know, in terms of how, what I took home, mm. you know, mm. from, from art teaching. Yeah. It was inspiring, but actually, um, I, I, I actually felt very comfortable mm. teaching yep. and I enjoyed it. And you, it, it gives you that wonderful opportunity to be around some of the best and brightest. I agree. I agree. That's, uh, that's my big thought, that that's what you would have got out of it as well. Yeah. So why did you give it up? I only gave it up um, like 18 months ago because uh, it, was, it was time to retire. Um, you know, I, 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 I turned, what, 66? And um, look, I could have stayed and um, continued to, in the last three years, you know, they, they're paying um, a at that point, I was on contract and they were paying like 17.5% super, super, which is good. So suddenly I saw my, you know, my retirement sort of coffers just start filling really quickly. And a lot of people, I think, get um, seduced by that. They get seduced by, well, not seduced, but they get um, uh, um, constrained by family commitments, children, providing for children. Um, uh, house ownership and all of that. And I was willing, I always had the, um, the attitude that I, I, I came with nothing and um, I, I don't really, you know, I, I need to do what I'm here, what I, I, what I do best, I guess. Mm. There's a really beautiful, Jane Bowles is a great um, um, author from the 30s, 40s, 50s. She married Paul Bowles. She was a lesbian. Paul was gay. They lived in Tangier. M amazing writer. And in one of her short um, plays, it's very beautiful. It's called Quarrelling Pair. One of the characters of the two sisters says, my heart's too big to make a home. And I made a work based on that quote when I was in TAFE. It was a drawing. My sister's got it. And um, I still feel that. I feel like, you know, I feel that it's almost a political um, position I've taken in terms of being an artist. Yeah. And I'm willing to forgo the sort of, the trappings of security in order to practice. Well, good on you. Good well, on you. I might be an idiot. <laughs> I might end up poverty stricken and on the streets. Yeah. But if, unless you take that, um, plunge? Plunge. You never know. Yeah. Now, you've got a, a studio. Where is it? It's in uh, at the Gasworks Art, Arts Park in uh, Albert Park. And you're, and, and for those that, that don't know, uh, there is a whole lot of studios around um, the dog park yes. um, where artists all work out of. And you're in this pretty large space with how many other artists? Four other artists. Right, and it, you're all very separate. And you were actually telling me that you use them for little uh, bits and pieces to help you with, with what you're doing. Last night, honestly, because I've, I've got 
this show coming up. It's a big show. And um, I'm making work that is, you know, larger than, you know, um, these works, for example. Um, and I, I, I got the money to make these works through the Australia Council and through McClelland, where the show will be on. I was able to actually sh uh, share the love of, 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 of those resources uh, to um, people that are around me that have the skills mm. that can um, help me make um, yeah. some of these works. And how lo lovely that you're doing that. Um, getting the money um, is, is sometimes a really hard part, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, how how are you positioned in that? Um, you know, like going after grants and whatever. Is it something that you enjoy, or is it something you just have to do? It's funny. This last grant um, from the Australia Council, I um, I applied last year, and I didn't get it. And I, I you know, I, I rang them and I spoke to them, and they went, "We'll try again." And and I spoke to the curator at McClelland, and I thought. Oh, and I also spoke to Paul Yore, mm. and he went, that happened to me, and I just did it again. And so I, I thought, okay, I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to ask for more money this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you didn't give it to me first, so I'm going to get more money out of you, yeah, you bastards. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, so, um, and then I reworked the um, application, and I really enjoyed the, and I had a lot of fun with the application. Okay. And um, because, you know, you, you learn writing through it. When you're working in academia or whatever, you learn how to write. Yep. And I don't know, if, you know, anyway, I can write, I can write. And I, I had a lot of fun with it. And amazingly, they, um, they agreed to fund it. Right. But, you know, when then I looked at, at what other grants that I'd received over the years and um, over three decades and, you know, I've had a, I've had quite a few. I've had a, about I don't know, four from Creative Victoria, Arts Victoria, four or five. I've had um, um, I think I've had three from the Australia Council. Um, I've I've lived on um, on scholarships, scholarships for my masters, scholarships for my um, PhD. Um, a travelling scholarship for my coursework masters at, in New York. So I've, you know, I've managed to work the system to support my practice because the market is, is market's growing here in Australia now. We've seen it grow exponentially in the last decade, but it hasn't always been the case. And it's still very difficult mm. to um, survive purely on your art. Mm. I think what has helped me as well as um, as a sculptor, you know, I've done some um, large public works, and the budgets for those mm. is more significant. Let, let's go to in your studio. I went down there the other other week, and um, I was picking up little bits and pieces. You know, like as big as the glass. I go, what's this? And it's something that's massive. And your famous one that's on the, the freeway, uh, which it, I think is over my shoulder, uh, you know, like I looked up and there was this dried up uh, <laughs> sort of flowery thing, and, but there was a twist in it, um, like your sculpture, and I went, oh, there it is. And you went, yeah, that, that was what I, I, I um, you know, like created out of From that. that. Uh, how exciting would have that been at that moment when you go, uh, yeah, and and we're talking about a huge piece that's on a on a freeway and is going back into, um, uh, you know, like well, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but you know, just coming up with the idea, or you you weld a couple of um, pieces of wire together, and that's the the start of another piece. But the one that really impressed me is there was this um, photo of a sort of 60s girl with all curls uh, on, on her head and it's been sitting in your studio for a while and you've created a piece out of that. Tell, tell our audience. Well, some of those um, 
there's a, a couple of ways I work. I, I can work from existing forms and in terms of the um, uh, agapanthus, dried agapanthus flower that came from um, my collaborator Emily Cara Nicolopoulos who's an Ikebana um, practitioner, master practitioner. Um, you know, I can, I can work from things in the real world, which I've done a lot, um, and then somehow transform them into sculptures. But I guess the thing with the hairstyles, oh, well, actually, with that, that fantastic, um, it's an updo. Do you know what an updo is? Well, we'll be showing it as we speak, because <laughs> remember, I took a photo That's of That's right. It. Um, so, uh, yeah, I can take something like that, and I tried probably five years ago to um, model something from that image and it just didn't work. And um, this time I just did it in paper and then we, we copied it and, uh, in, in, into CAD. So I, ca I can work from known things, um, and, but in the last 18 months what I've been trying to do is uh, work from unknown things, which means that um, uh, that's where I taught myself welding and I started just working with basic shapes of circles and ellipses. Mm. And, and I'd, start, I'd make the circles and ellipses in steel wire, weld them together and start cutting and shaping and cutting and shaping without a, a, without a pre-existing intention. So that's, but I've always worked in maquette, always. Mm. And as a, as a sculptor, I think we all need to have that capacity to uh, work small, but see it uh, in the scale that's right for mm. the site or yeah. for the setting or for the exhibition yeah. or whatever. But there's this other one beautiful piece and it stands or, uh, almost a metre high, I, I think it is, but you actually drew that and it's sort of, you know, the, the shapes are very 70 um, shapes that's gonna be part of this exhibition. That's a photocopy on the wall with the, the sort of leaf-like shapes. Yep. Yeah, that's a, a planned photocopy, photocopy from Officeworks. And that is uh, from uh, the CAD stage, the computer model stage, uh, where I was trying to determine the scale. So I'd get them photocopied oh, at actual okay. scale yep. and sort of m m m mock it up, I guess, in the studio as if it's sitting on a base and yeah, whatever. Yeah. So that, that's to establish the scale. Right, so it, it wasn't a drawing that you did. Um, you know, like where was the, the, the uh, initial idea? Well, the idea came from steel, the steel welding, which you probably would not recognise, but I, but you know, I can make those leaps from these sort of strange skeletal okay. sort of forms yeah. that I'm welding yeah. to then sit down with Ben, who is in my studio and he's a whiz in so many ways, um, but he's particularly good um, in terms of Rhino, you know, and CAD um, modeling programs, uh, computer modeling programs. And uh, I was able to complete it through the CAD. Mm. Then we, you know, output, you know, one of the, you know, one perspective and I photocopied, mm. uh, you know, got that sort of um, enlarged it. Well, it's a beautiful it. piece. And I, I saw the raw piece. Um, I, I, I believe it's going to be painted. Is that right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. I'm ten I tend to paint uh, most of my sculptures. I think it's just because it's, um, it, it allows me to play with colour more. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about um, the one on the freeway again, uh, because it's um, so, so massive and su such a, a talking point. So many people see it with the, this little lights and all that, and especially considering that I've seen the original uh, piece that you did. Uh, uh, John, what does that mean to you to actually have a huge piece like that, that's seen by thousands of people? It's a good question because, well, there's, it means a few things. I mean, one is um, my parents lived around the corner from the site where it has been for the last four years and um, in Langwaran they lived. And um, they have, Dad died, you know, nine years ago yesterday. And, um, but n neither of them would, you know, got to see it. Mm. And, um, because mum died as well a bit later. Um, and in a way, I, I think I, t well, to some extent I called it Love Flower because 
it was, um, it, it, in, a, in a sense, it was there to honour them because they would have been thrilled. Yeah, of <laughs> course, course they would have been. But my, 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 you know, my um, family sort of live in the area as well. And, um, um, you know, at that time it went up, my niece was in, as a, working as a nurse in, you know, the hospital across the road and blah, blah, blah. But so on that level, it was sort of, uh, it was really important to just sort of, I don't know, to show my family yeah. um, and what, what I can do. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, I suppose it is. But what about that first time you, you're driving down the freeway and then all of a sudden there it is? What, what, what feeling does an artist, and well, what did you get from seeing it? You know, like, uh, yes, the family acknowledgement, and, um, but you know, like, uh, uh, I, I would have been blown away. Look, sometimes I take the earlier um, off route, right. the freeway, because it, as an artist, it can be horrifying seeing your work. No, <laughs> no. It can be. I, I, and part of it is like, is it even going to stay up in that bloody windy, you know, <laughs> location? It's 15 metres high, you know. Um, look, do you know, I was at a lunch the other day at the Lyceum Club in town, which is, you know, sort of, I don't know, it's the... It's the, the female, the women's equivalent to the Melbourne Club yep. because women were not allowed into the Melbourne Club. And um, there was a lunch for a hundred and, was over a hundred people, I'm sure. And it was a fundraiser for McClelland. And um, I felt that I knew quite a few people in the room and that they... I don't know. I, I felt that I belonged there, which was sort of... And in a sense, that's what you're saying. I mean, maybe you're not saying that. But it, what, it, what it does do is it, is it gives you a level of acceptance mm. um, in the world, you know, in the arts, but also in the local community mm. of um, mm. Frankston. Yep. You know, and I, I mean, the, the, the posts, the local posts on... The, the, Frankston has a local sort of Facebook page. And there was something like 500 comments, you know. Whoa. It was sort of great to work on all sorts of levels yeah. of society. You know, yeah. my family, the local community. Mm. And I, you know, the way I thought about this, love flower, if, if love flower, um, it comes from, it's a dried agapanthus. It comes from um, two words in Greek, and I can't say them properly, but um, Emily Car Nicolopoulos could. And the first one is agapa, which we get the word agape from, which is love, and panthus, which is flower. And I felt as, an, as, a, as a gesture, agapanthus is a roadside um, weed these days. It's classified <laughs> as a weed. But I felt like uh, I, as a kid, just plucked these weeds from the side of the road and raised them up. To, sh to give to my mum and dad. Oh, <laughs> well, how beautiful, how beautiful. And also give to the local community. So yeah. I, I, I felt it was a sort of, um, a, you know, I don't know, a sort of humble gesture. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's been appreciated by so many people. Yeah, it has. Yeah. And it's making a move. Where's it yeah, going? Yeah, it's being relocated permanently to the... Um, uh, sculpture Park at McClelland right. in Langwarren. Right, so it will be there when your exhibition's on. Yeah. And how, how exciting is that? The fact is, you know, like you love flowers there and then you've got, how many galleries are you in? Um, three galleries. I'm in three galleries. My exhibition is called John Mead, It's Personal. Um, and I think I just described in one aspect of yeah. it being personal. Um, that's art making is personal. Um, but what was the question again? Yeah. Like, About... What, what, what does it mean to you know, like have, have the love flower there and, and three galleries with your art? Yeah, and it's a retrospect, isn't it, in a way? Yeah, I feel um, that it's a really lovely, similar to what I was saying about love flower, I think it's a really lovely opportunity to just invite everyone that's, you know, um, I don't know, been interested in what I've done and before making art or through making art and whatever, through my life, really, to just sort of invite them along and say, you know, here's a, here's a, um, you know, just a, a, a small sort of um, 
demonstration of some of the things that I've done, and I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy so, it. So, um, that's what it means. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, for me, it's a good opportunity to also, look. I, I, you know, my styles are very desperate, you know, um, they... What do you mean by that, desperate? Desperate. Oh, oh I thought it was desperate. I. I thought it was a No, what? desperate, meaning they, ha they, they often have different styles, yep. or different forms and... Very different. And, um, and I think, for me, there was always, um, the, it was, it's the driver behind the making of the, of the works that is, that stays the same. Um, and, and that might be sensuality, it might be surface, it might be form, it might be sexuality, it might be um, colour, it might be shape, it might be all sorts of things that might be interesting to me. Um, it might be gender, um, it might be, uh, yeah, all sorts of things. But, um, and it will come out in all sorts of ways. There's a, there's a room, one room is just a, a video, two screen video, which I made uh, 23 years ago. Um, so here's an opportunity to see these different works um, and maybe get a sense of the whole, the overall picture that is driving mm. these works. Mm. Mm. Well, congratulations. And it's been wonderful. It was great going to your um, studio as well and, and seeing all these little bits and pieces that mean some, something to on a bigger form. I, I loved it. And, and your art is, is spectacular. I can't wait to see this exhibition. Thank you, David. No, my pleasure. Thanks for being on the show today. No worries. I'm David Hunt. It's all about art. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye. Thank you.